want to thank Biostock for inviting me to present SICUM here uh, at this Life Science Summit. I'm so happy we have live events again. SICUM is a technology platform company. Uh, the name SICUM comes from Latin, desicare, which means to dry. And we are drying biologics, uh, which is indeed very difficult. And we have focusing most of all on vaccines. And that's why we have this tagline, setting vaccines free. Within the vaccines, we have a key focus on mRNA LMP, uh, which is indeed a hotspot in the vaccine market today. And that's why we have this picture uh, as our common company symbol these days. An introduction to the company. Uh, the origin is from a Karolinska venture called Inhalation Sciences AB, uh, developing analytics for inhalation. Uh, and the first patent comes in 2008. But after more research and development, the company realized this innovation for drying biologics is so important, it merits its own company. And that's when Sikum AB was spun out in 2017. It's a listed company today at Nasdaq First North. Uh, we have offices and a pilot facility here in Lund. Very happy to be in Ideon Science Park, uh, just next door from Medicon Village. Today we have a headcount of eight FDs, uh, we have a number of consultants, and we have a network of really high-class experts working for us. And first, looking at the technology. Uh, and if there's only one takeaway you get from my presentation, it's this, that we have a unique technology in SICUM. And why is that? Uh, we are drying biologics by mass transfer, and this is unique. Every other drying method for drugs is by heat transfer, energy transfer, while we have enabled mass transfer. And this is such a gentle process. This is why it's enabling drying very, very uh, delicate biologics. Our technology is called laminar paste, uh, and we are drying liquid biologics into powder, into micronized powder. At the point of administration, the powder can be reconstituted into liquid for injection as normal. But the technology also lends itself to new administration routes, such as inhalation or patches. Key benefits, uh, it's a room temperature process. It's a very, very gentle process. Uh, and thus you get high yield, you don't ruin your delicate product. And most of all, the powder drug is thermostable. And I'm sure you have all heard of this issue in the vaccine industry after the pandemic hit us. So the product can be transported very easily and cost-effectively. No cold chain or freeze chain required. Uh, the look of the equipment, it's a manufacturing unit which can easily be plugged in into pharmaceutical manufacturing. We have today reached our fourth generation. Uh, we have three pilot suites installed here in Lund. Uh, and the picture is taken just one week ago, so it's very fresh photo material from us. A few words about the drying competitive arena and drying technologies uh, for APIs, act active pharmaceutical ingredients. The old traditional method is freeze drying or lyophilization. Uh, this is maybe practical, but it's low tech, cumbersome, time consuming, uh, and provides quite some stress. So not a lot of biologists can be dried. Uh, with this method. Uh, the next step the industry has taken is to spray drying. This is a more practical, continuous, continuously operated process, but it gives a lot of stress on the compound. There's mechanical stress, there's thermal stress, there's interfacial stress. So you can imagine it's very, very tricky to succeed actually getting your product dried. And this is why we think the future is in the laminar pace. Uh, the technology has five unique benefits. I mentioned two to you already. The low drying stress, the high process yield. Uh, there's also a very good benefit to particle engineering here. And that's why it also lends itself to inhalation. It provides an aseptic drying, which is also very desirable. And it's a one-step process. So you obtain the high yield, cost efficient and thermostable product. So, the overall goal, let's crack the code chain 
uh, and gain in sustainability. We can completely avoid all this very cumbersome and difficult transporting of the COVID-19 vaccine, which you have all heard of and seen. Uh, also, we gain enormously in sustainability, and this is a big topic in, in Big Pharma today. Uh, if you look at the carbon footprint of a vaccine, of a cold chain vaccine, over 90% of the carbon footprint is due to the transport. Uh, and this, we think, would completely change the industry. A second part here on strategy and business focus. Uh, and I'm happy to say we have made such significant company progress this year. Uh, it's indeed fantastic. First of all, we have set a new strategic focus. Uh, we are taking the company from vision to real action. Uh, we are going into industrialization. We have new management in place. We have a clear, successful strategy, and we have implemented a new business plan. Secondly, uh, and this should be your second takeaway, if you don't hear anything else, you should hear this, that we are building a very significant pipeline now of, of commercial partnerships in, in big pharma and in biotech. So we have a very significant pipeline of dialogues. Uh, this is due to three factors, really. The first factor is the change in the vaccine industry. Before the pandemic, it was a very conservative, slow-moving and low-margin industry. Very difficult to, to discuss new technology and, and to get innovation into vaccines. Uh, the pandemic has changed that completely. Now it's a hot spot in the pharma industry. And, and the companies are pouring in money into new innovation. Uh, so we are, getting, we are getting fantastic interest. The second factor is that I'm bringing a lot of international pharma network to SICUM. So we have a lot of doors we now can open easily uh, to get our message through. And the third point is that we have fantastic readouts right now coming. I will get back to that at the end. Uh, and of course, it's a very big help to open the door, but also get into the door when we have very nice results from the trials in the company. Furthermore, on, on the business side, we have worked a lot with the Eurostars application submitted in September. So we have a very good partner in Zurich for this. Uh, and currently, we're working on a CEPI application. CEPI is an international uh, unit trying to avoid pandemic surprises, so to say, internationally. And they have billions they are handing out. So we are trying to get a small part of that effort as well. And then the third part is the technology development. Here we have a very solid base, a very solid plan. We keep moving ahead according to the plan already set. And we are also making even some further improvements. And this year, uh, we are very happy to have installed these three pilot suites here in Lund, uh, where we run testing, drying trials. Uh, we are working on the components of the technology, so we are right now finalizing nebulizer and column design. Uh, we have taken a big decision on a 3D modeling project. Uh, this is with the Zurich Institute of Applied Sciences. They are doing cloud-based uh, computing, simulating our technology. And here we can gain years, basically, in optimizing and scaling out the technology and doing this then with 3D modeling and not just in wet trials. Uh, and we are also very happy to have invested in our own equipment and analytical tools for mRNA LMP. Uh, so we can both generate our own LMP particles. Uh, we dry them in trials and then we also have the equipment to analyze the outcome encapsulation efficiency, the particle properties, and the vaccine activity at the end. A few words about the market. Um, like I mentioned, there's been a big boom in this industry. Uh, SICUM is focusing on three platforms. The mRNA vaccines, like mentioned, uh, subunit vaccines, adjuvanted vaccines is another name for that and viral vector vaccines. So these are the bars here that are red and yellow. Uh, and an estimate for yearly sales, years to come here, for the vaccine market in total is 67,000 to 80,000 million dollars. And that's not our market, of course. We have to address the drying. And with our business model of licensing, we can look at 1% approximately of the market. So 670 to 800 million dollars. 
and then slightly lower for the, our three key platforms, so 400 to 500 million dollars. Uh, but there's an, a, a tremendous need, really, for this, this kind of technology. Uh, and just a few more words here about the industry. Uh, it's been an enormous change, like I said, from a slow-moving, low-margin industry into this real hot spot of pharmaceutical development. All the existing vaccine players do anything they can to come up with new projects, and then completely new players are stepping into the market. And I'm sure you have heard of Moderna or BioNTech, uh, companies that were not even existing in vaccines in, in 2020, and then they had growth of 3,800% uh, to 2021. Um, so it's an enormous uh, hotspot for industry, really. Our business model, uh, licensing, like mentioned, uh, typically it has to go through a feasibility trial. Uh, one has to do very specific testing that the technology works for the actual vaccine or the actual biologic. Uh, that's done typically in two steps, feasibility and application study, uh, and then go into a licensing agreement. Uh, we, we do also do formulation. This is very important to have the optimal drying, that we have proprietary knowledge also to apply on the formulation. Here is an overview of uh, our pipeline. It's not the pipeline status, it's also an addition of achievements on all platforms. Uh, we are stepping away a bit from the top level where we have older, uh, lower margin products, and we are indeed focusing very much on the mRNA like already mentioned. We have two external collaborations, one biotech, one big pharma, uh, and we're also running our own internal trials. I have to add a comment to this slide, that we ha now have, like mentioned, uh, a really big number of good dialogues with big pharma and biotech companies. So I could add many, many bars here on dialogue, but it doesn't fit on the slide, really. <laughs> and then just... The mRNA readouts, uh, we are so happy to have su successful trials, uh, we, which we have, we have run trials and we have revalidated, and we now are very confident that we are su successfully drying LMPs, uh, these very delicate delivery particles enabling the whole COVID-19 effort in mRNA. Uh, it has good nebulization readouts, good drying readouts, and we are now investigating the vaccine activity here in Lund. And that's where I want to say thank you. Thank you. Vaccines, like you said, is of course a really hot topic at the moment. So what is the competition like out there? Uh, there's not much, I would say. There's a very big interest in thermostable vaccines, that's for sure. And that's a very big topic in the uh, World Vaccine Congress, for example. Some companies are trying different items to, different methods to reduce the stress, because that's the key topic, right? Reducing temperature, reducing stress. There is foam drying, there is some microwave drying, uh, but as far as we can see, uh, they are not as advanced as our technology. We have come further. And we also see a very easy one-step process benefit with our technology. So there is no one who does exactly what, what you do, put simply? Absolutely not. That's why I say we are unique. <laughs> I know that you have implemented a reorganization at Sikkim. Is this reorganization done and what has it meant for the company? It's fully done. Uh, it helped clarifying our roles and responsibilities. I think we are more uh, efficient, more agile. Uh, and we have a very good core team in the company. So what interest have you seen so far? If I know you talked a little bit about it, but what? Yeah, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> I know, I always ask that yeah. question knowing that you can't I wish I could tell it. you. <laughs> but, but let me say, we have taken a pipeline from a few dialogues to, I mean, double digits, serious dialogues uh, under CDA. Yeah, so it's very, very nice progress, I would say. Mm. I know you also got results from an evaluation study with Janssen in September, uh, which were perhaps not exactly what you would have wanted to see, I'm guessing. That's true. Uh, we are very happy to work with Janssen. I mean, the, the biggest player of them all, really. Uh, and it, 
At the same time, it was a bit painful because during the pandemic, this started several years ago, and during the pandemic, it was very, very slow to get them to, to yeah, be interested, basically, because they were very busy developing their own COVID vaccine, right? Uh, and we have run two trials, and they have a bit of... Um, the two factors look better and worse in the two trials. So one factor was first good and then worse, and the other one the other way around. So the conclusion from Janssen is that it would need further trials, which we find perfectly natural, because now we have far more knowledge in formulation, for example. But to apply that, they say they would rather go for the higher value platform, because they are the top on my slide. That's the lower margin mass vaccination platform. And it makes more sense to take this high value technology to the real high value projects. So that's what we are reviewing right now. So that's the next step then? That's the next so, step, yeah. Does uh, particle size play a role at all in um, the advantages of this technology compared to spray drying? Indeed, indeed it does. And, and maybe you noticed that we stem from a company called Inhalation Sciences. So originally the technology was developed with inhalation in mind, and then you are very precise about what kind of particle size you want, right? And we have the ability to vary uh, we have three different ranges of particle size, and then we can have good control on the particle distribution, size distribution within these ranges. And that's a clear benefit of the technology. Thank you. Thank you.